Today we're going to be discussing vacuum splints. I am an athlete down who has a suspected lower leg fracture and then my ATs are going to come out and assess the situation and describe how to put the vacuum splints on. So now that we've assessed her, we found that she has a closed fracture of her tibia. So we know we need a splint. Um, we have our vacuum splints over here. They're three different sizes. You need to assess your athlete to see which size will work best for her. Um, we need to make sure we're going to be able to splint above and below the fracture. So you have to pick the right length for that. And then also too, we need to make sure that all of the bees in the vacuum splint are evenly distributed so that way whenever we go in and we take air out of the splint, it's not jumbled up in certain areas to where it might put pressure on the fracture or it could put pressure above or below the fracture. Okay, so um, he's going to lift um, our athlete's leg um, and stabilize above and below so that we don't injure our athlete more and I'm going to slide the vacuum splint underneath. And I'm going to be sure to lift just enough to where the splint can slide underneath it, just so that way I'm not causing my athlete any extra pain. All right, you ready? Yes. All right, now lift on three. One, two, three. Lift. Good. Now we're going to spring the splint around and we're going to velcro strap it. We're going to do this pretty loose because we do need to take air out. And if we do it too tight off of the start, it's just gonna be really hard for the pump to be able to get the air out of the rest of the splint. So on this side of the vacuum splint, we have a little um, nozzle that you have to click our pump into to take the air out. So I'm gonna click that in. And as you're going through too, this can take up to from 30 seconds all the way up to a minute to be able to get the air fully out. But after a certain period of time, you're going to be able to see that air and start to see the beads more clearly. And also too, you're going to talk to your athlete too and make sure that it's not getting too tight or up. They can actually feel that the air is coming out. Can you feel that the air is coming out? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Does it feel tight? And then after all the air is out, you do want to re do the straps so that way we make sure it's actually tight and so that way we're not causing any movement on this fracture. Another thing too is that we want to make sure that we can go in and assess pulse. So, um, so that way we can make sure that there's not any uh, vascular injuries to our athlete either. And then when once we're done and we want to take um, some air out of the splint, we can readjust the pump and put the um, clothes in this way. And then plug it back in, and then we're gonna bring out the air. And as she's taking the, putting the air back in to the splint, you also wanna make sure that whenever you transport an athlete with a vacuum splint, that you wanna transport with a pump because the emergency room doesn't know how to undo these. And so if you don't give a pump to the athlete or with the ambulance, then they're just gonna cut it off and you'll never be able to reuse it. Okay. 